Watch your footing here. Okay. It was kind of it was trampled, but like it was wet, so the ground has a lot. Of yeah, I mean this field hasn't been grazing well. It is grasses, but there's a lot of there's invasives too, like this stuff. The biggest problems are this brush, and then uh, the Italian thistle, which has the little purple flowers on top, the spikes. How do you get rid of those thistles? That's a big problem. With cattle. The only way really is to pack them shoulder to shoulder in a field and have them pound it out. Part of the ranch or that's something else? No, that's across the street. I mean, the third, yeah, the third one's around the corner here. That's... Have you seen the new bull? No. What? That's Mike. That's the new bull. I need to get a little closer. Which one? The brown one? Yeah. I want to make sure they're in their field and that they're performing well and happy and have, have water, have their minerals, have everything they need. And then it's super easy. You'll see, I'll just cut the line and they'll just run through and I can, I'll move them in a grand total for probably about one minute. Let me show up in the morning and remove them. Hey, cows, hey. Sixty-four. It is. I promise you. There's forty fin forty-four finishers and twenty yearlings in here. All right, kids, you ready to move? Is that just, oh, that's a wire though, right? It's wire and plastic. Maybe even, not even a minute, maybe. Uh, animals, when they're hungry, the way to tell, tell if they're hungry or not, whether you fed them enough, is that when, they, when you move them in the morning, their rumen is a good indicator of whether they're hungry. So that right in front of their hip bone there, there's a triangle pocket that if it's sucked in at all, means that they haven't got quite enough. 30 minutes, it takes a little while to drive back and forth. Which one's best, vetch or clover? Not, they're both super high in protein, so. They check their boundaries because they want to know what their what their field size is and where they can go. And then once they do that, then they they start eating and move back and forth in their field. have you been shocked? 15.
in the really hot times when we used to have like 80 animals, they'd go through 2,000 gallons almost in a day. How much? But in the winter, they go through like, like 300 or 400 because there's so much water on the grass that they're like, they don't need to. Are you just changing that out or? Yeah. All right, so another thing, I just gotta, I'm just gonna pull the truck into here so I have enough room with the, the hose. So, and just hold that tight so that, cause that holds that whole side tight. Oh, got it. Yeah, okay. So just hold that I got for it. a minute while I do this. All right, I got and it. Dad, if you'll just They're called skurs. They're not real actual horns. They're like, you can see they're like little like things that curve over. Right. I mean, that, that he's full grown. And so like, those are not even that big of horns. Come on, mamas. It does not look like a deer tick, it's too big. Uh, our owners, Tom and Pat. Keep where, what times we don't want to be in a field because it's too wet or birds or other considerations. We map all that out, then we map out where we want to graze at a certain time of year. And we plan all that out. Last year we lost two calves to mountain lions. Uh. And we're trying to see. We're trying to coexist with them. We don't want. We don't want the, to to go out there and, and harm them, but we want to live with them. But we don't want them to take our calves. But this is the herd. We've kind of we're able to really play with our genetics here. Like as we've talked about, this is really an experiment. So just even with the grazing, it's a it's an experiment. But with herd composition and with the way we want to see our herd kind of develop over time, I don't have to worry about them going anywhere and we can work in these tight spaces and learn how to handle them and learn how to move them in low stress ways because it's really it's really easy it makes life easier on you to do it that way and it makes them have a great life they don't get stressed out makes the meat better in the end but it makes their overall experience better what we try to do is get them to just eat that bite so that that forces the ground uh, for the grass to regrow so you don't want to eat it all the way down because then that the roots just have to they'll die and the plant kind of dies but you want to just eat it like halfway almost you just want to eat that bite off the top and force the plant to regrow, which pulls that carbon and organic matter into the soil and cause it to regrow. And then at this time of year, we're really trying to create a layer of like mulch for the soil. So a lot of times when uh, the grass is not quite tall enough to do it here, but our lease property, it's tall enough that they eat it enough, but they're laying down so much that, that the grass just lays over and covers all the bare soil so that when it rains, it's not hitting on bare soil and we're not causing any erosion so that it literally, it, just, it stays there and the grass will bounce right back up. Your your goals kind of change throughout the year. When you're in this time of year, when things are starting to not grow as much, you really want to lay things down, and uh, especially not you don't want to graze your perennials and natives too hard because those are the ones that are keep growing throughout the year. Your annuals are the ones that are starting to die out now. If you see anything that's brown around the ranch right now, that's because they're annuals and they're and they're and they're dying back now. But the ones, the perennials, are the ones that stay green all year. Those are the kind of grasses that we'll be able to graze through all the way through the winter, back into the next growing season. I love my job because I get to work out with animals at this beautiful 1800 acre ranch 
that as you can see is super sunny and nice and don't have to sit at a desk. I had a great mentor named Mike Giannini who taught me everything about how to work with cattle, to graze grasslands, to have fun at work, to have fun outside of work, to just love your job and love every minute of it. So I'll never forget what he taught me.